thank you everyone for joining me today here in uh, lovely Merida, Mexico. My first time in Mexico, so uh, happy to be here. In my session today, we'll be going over how you can create more inclusive, more engaging and more accessible experiences with STEM content by using voice technology inside of the Moodle LMS. My name is Jarno Antjes and I work for, uh, for ReadSpeaker. We are a Moodle certified integration partner and been in business for the last 25 years on creating solutions that add to accessibility, inclusion and engagement in all types of, of platforms, including Moodle, which we, well, we supply to a wide range of organizations globally in various different, uh, different industries. Now, in today's session, I want to first dive into the challenges faced in STEM e-learning. So we have to know about the problems that are indeed faced by learners, faced by students, and faced by organizations like yourselves. From that, it will become apparent why it's important to design for inclusivity and accessibility. And I just don't, don't just want to, you know, highlight problems and benefits or importance, but I want to show you, I want to give you an actual tool you could potentially put inside of your toolbox to indeed design for inclusion and accessibility. And not just from a theoretical standpoint, but I want to share a real world example in the form of the Flamse STEM Olympiade, or in English, the Flemish STEM Olympiade. For all of you here, there is a kind of blocking the view. There's a QR code. If you wish to receive a copy of the slides, feel free to just scan the code. It will be on the last slide as well. But if you want to have a copy, because there's links in here, feel free to connect with me. It leads to my LinkedIn and I'm happy to supply you a copy of these slides available. Now, before we start off, and as this is a presentation which is also focused on increasing engagement, I want to always have a bit of engagement with my, uh, with the audience during a presentation. So I want to start off with a, with a very simple, smart question. When you look at this picture and if you think about the learners or users or students within your institution or organization or your Moodle or Moodle Workplace LMS, or even think of yourself, if you have to consume a lot of content, whether that's attachments to emails or documents or lengthy texts to consume inside of Moodle. How many of you, and please just raise a hand, how many of you think that, yeah, you might have a couple of students or maybe even larger number of students frustrated on having to consume all of this information? I saw a couple, oh, oh, I just saw a couple of hands, but that's, yeah. So that's more than we would all probably anticipate. It's a common problem. Engagement and making sure that people stick to their course and completely, well, complete their course is indeed a challenge. And especially in STEM education. Now, for those of you that don't know, STEM is an abbreviation for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. The beta courses, so to say. For many students, they either like it or they hate it. So engagement is indeed something you would want to achieve. Now, very recently, there was a, an article, which was a literary research article, that aggregated a multitude of previous academic research on the effectiveness of STEM learning, which is, of course, a perfect jumping point for us in this presentation to look into. Now, Yes, I made an oversimplification of these categories available because, well, you know how these academic papers could be, you know, they could have like really long alineas and long sentences that doesn't fit on a slide. But it all boils down to two major categories of challenges. The first one being how to actively engage students or learners in STEM content or STEM e-learning, but also how to accurately assess their STEM skills without these students being hindered by any other barriers they might face at the same time. Because you want to make sure that you accurately assess those particular skills in STEM. 
Now, luckily, this research paper, this literary study, didn't just aggregate challenges. No, they also looked into the recommendations they found across all of these studies. It was a handful of recommendations, and I cherry-picked the three most relevant ones for today's presentation. And they boil down to the recommendation to create a learning environment or an e-learning environment that is accessible and inclusive to all students and taking into account recognizing and acting and therefore designing focusing on that diversity you need to recognize there is a diversity of students and act upon that to make sure that they're all included inside of your e-learning or your stem e-learning because paying attention to their diversity will indeed increase their positive perception, which will boost their engagement in STEM learning. Personally, when I read these, and I was making this presentation and I read the recommendations, I immediately had to think of a, a cartoon that's been going around in inclusivity, accessibility in education. You might have already seen it at some point in the last couple of decades. And this is a very clear visual representation of these recommendations and it really depicts why it's important. As you can see, it's a wide diversity of students and the diversity is depicted in animals. We're all different. Everyone has a, you know, a different set of background or challenges faced. Now the professor or the teacher here wants to assess their skills of movement and to be fair he comes up with the exact same exam for all of them for all of these students and the challenge or the exam is climb the tree well let's be honest the bird and the monkey will have no problem whatsoever on reaching the top of that tree but if you look at the fish and the seal yeah they're gonna fail so this particular test, if you want to test for movement or ability to move or speed of movement, seals can move. Have you ever seen a seal like being chased by an orca or a killer whale and then whoosh, speed away? That might even be quicker than a monkey. But this particular test did not take their diversity into account. And I can tell you one thing, talking about engagement, these will be engaged and have a positive perception. They will hate it. Even though they might be the quickest in their own field or their own natural habitat, they will hate this particular assignment. And that brings us to the importance of designing and taking into account this diversity amongst your learners or your students. Because quite simply, not everyone can engage in the same impartial way especially with written content, up to 20% of people around the world will have trouble, will experience barriers in consuming information or course material if it's only in a written form. And that ranges from a whole wide range of challenges they might face, from linguistical barriers, students who might have to partake in a course written in a language that's not their native language. They don't just have to learn the content. No, they have to use their linguistical skills as well simultaneously. Also, those students with a neurodiversity challenge, most commonly known dyslexia, but also concentrational disorders, autism, all these challenges they might face and which might pose a barrier for them. Also nowadays, a lot of students use their smartphone small screen devices to consume information, to engage with their course material. Well, let's all be honest. I mean, reading an email from a small screen device is already harder than reading it from a large screen laptop. Or a situational barrier in the form of, they might be on their way to college or back or on their way to work and back, traffic tra 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 in a train, a bus, having all that noise, all that distraction, distracting them from focusing and engaging with the course material. And I see I have to speed up a bit, sorry. 
Um, but also those learners who might prefer to listen instead of wanting to read. I mean, not everyone has a reading preference, let's be honest. People, there's a, there's a reason why Spotify and podcasts are so popular. People prefer to listen instead of reading a book on the same topic. And of course, those with a visual impairment. So, knowing the challenges, the recommendations, the importance, and for whom it's important, how can we overcome these challenges? Well, at ReadSpeaker, we always have a very clear recommendation. Provide an alternative format. If you're offering your content in one format only, a visual reading requirement, that does not take into account diversity. So allow them to consume the information in a different format. And audio is a perfect way of giving them a choice between reading or listening to content. And it's easily achievable by using text-to-speech technology. It automatically converts any written text into listenable audio through AI-powered voices in a wide range of languages. And especially for STEM, it can take into account any markup languages like MathML or LaTeX. And it has pr customizable pronunciation just to make sure that it's accurate for your learners. And the more accurate, the more they'll like it, the more, the more they'll engage with this tool or your content. So quickly go over the benefits because of the time limit. Of course, being able to listen will overcome a lot of these challenges we saw on the previous slide. It levels the playing field for all by providing them a choice. They receive autonomy for themselves to choose whether I want to read or listen. And this isn't just something we, we claim. No, we actually participated in research performed by and at the University of Barcelona, where they used the ReadSpeaker plugin for their, their Moodle LMS. And the results were dual. First of all, it confirmed that yes, even at a university level, there's a wide range of students who suffer from reading and writing problems. And secondly, it confirms that yes, being able to use speech technology helps overcome these challenges and these issues. In numbers, this particular study showed that when these students, and it's the University of Barcelona, so their native language is predominantly Spanish, when they had to consume course material written in their native language, 20% of students scored higher on concentration and comprehension. So one out of five. But when these students had to consume course material written in English, not their native language, in some cases their second, but maybe even their third language, that number jumped from 20% to 65%. So two out of every three university level students scored better in concentrating and comprehending or understanding the written content. Now these are of course powerful numbers that show how to overcome these language barriers by an alternative format. And to give you a real world example, this is exactly what the Flemish STEM Olympiad does. It's a annual competition in a hybrid form so they have their initial pre-selection courses all done online in Moodle, hosted by Umena, one of the Moodle service providers, in order to make sure that in that small time frame, it's approximately within the same week, 60,000 students participate in these first selectional rounds in Moodle. But they wanted to make sure that these students had all had a fair chance that they were designed to include all the diversity amongst these students to accurately assess their STEM skills and not have them be hindered by any barriers like dyslexia, like non-native backgrounds, etc. So they incorporated audio and it's used on a massive scale. As you can see, more than 100,000 times it's been used during these exams. I had a bit of Time's up. I had a short video, a very short one, to demo this. We're, of course, very happy to do so otherwise at our booth. Like I said, we're a certified integration. We're actually sponsoring the event. So, whoops, let's go to the next slide. 
With this, I want to thank you all for your attention. Feel free to come by our stand if you do want to see that video later on to have that experience on how we indeed speech enable math content. Happy to provide you the slides. Again, the QR code is now in a better angle. I'm not blocking it myself. Happy to share the slides. And of course, if you want to have a short you know, introduction on how per perhaps this technology sounds in the language you're teaching in, let us know, come by, happy to show you. Thank you all very much. <laughs>